How's it going everyone? Today we're going to be talking about Apollo and GraphQL resolvers. So what is Apollo? Well it's a platform for building a data graph, which is basically just a communication layer that relays data between your application clients and your backend services. So Apollo is known for a lot of different services including Apollo Server and Apollo Client, both of which we'll be using in later videos. So I've decided to introduce you guys to Apollo now just because now that you have a basic understanding of the GraphQL fundamentals, I actually want to introduce you to something that pretty much is very commonly used with GraphQL because it really simplifies stuff and adds you know, nice functionality that simplifies the development process. So look at this diagram. Let's say you have you know, your application clients, let's say your web application, your iOS application, your Android application, and then you have this in your back and you have a REST API that you're using, a microservice, and a database, right? So here you can see Apollo is really the communication layer. It's a relays the data, right? So let's say you make a GraphQL uh, query, and then Apollo is going to handle this and say, okay, well, I'm going to access this data, get the data that I need that you asked for specifically, and send it back, right? So... What is Apollo Server? Well, Apollo Server is really just a GraphQL server and is compatible with any GraphQL client. So why should we be using it though? Well, it has very straightforward setup, not a lot of boilerplate code, incremental adoption, meaning that whenever you need something, you can just add it very easily, integrate it very easily, only add it when you need it, universal compatibility, so again, compatible with any GraphQL client and a lot of different tools and build tools. And also project production readiness, right? You can ship it very quickly with not a lot of configuration or boilerplate, like I said. So let's look at this diagram. Let's say you had a React web application, and then you have you know your backend set up with the Mongo database, you know, a cache for state management, and then a third-party API. So let's say, you know, the UI, you make a request from the UI, right? The user interface, let's say a user wanna sign up, he clicks on a button or submits a form, and so it's kind of sent in a term in, in terms of a GraphQL query or mutation. And so Apollo GraphQL server will get that. It will handle that, right? It will handle that request, say, okay, this is the data that you asked for. Now I actually have to, you know, get that data from my whatever databases or serv services it's connected to and actually get that data and then send it back to render in the view, right? So that's basically the, the workflow. And Apollo Client is really just, again, it simplifies the process and the state management inside your client side. And so things like writing queries or sending writing mutations or just managing state, Apollo Client, it really, really helps you do that and simplifies it. Okay, so what are resolvers though? Resolvers are very important when defining an Apollo server. So basically, they're responsible for populating the data for a single field in your schema. So what does that mean? Well, we talked about you know getting the request, right? So let's say a user defines uh, a client defines the, you know the the query and the data that they want. Well, how do you actually populate that data, right? How does Apollo GraphQL Server know you know if I need this data, where do I go? What do I do? And that's where resolvers come in. So. Let's look at this diagram, right? So you have your types, right? Let's say a query is made, you have your types, it's defined in your schema, right? And then the resolvers will handle getting the data that populates the fields in your types or your queries or mutations by accessing other databases or other third-party APIs. And then once it gets the data, it sends it back as a response. So let's look through a very basic example. You know, this is just a very basic proof of concept. It's not very realistic because just of how like nobody's gonna make a make a function for this, but let's look at this example. So you have a type query, right? This is a very basic schema, and you have these fields. So any client can call these queries and they're expecting an int back, and in this case we're hard coding you know, it should return a number six, and here it should return number seven. So like I said, it's very useless, but just to prove a concept. So how do we actually tell Apollo GraphQL server how to actually get a six and return it back? How, how, does, how do we tell it that? And then again, that's where resolvers come in. So a resolver map, right, is basically a JavaScript object. So in every Apollo GraphQL server, you would have something called the resolver map. And it's a single JavaScript object, as you can see here, cons resolvers and then inside you would have resolver functions which for example is number six or number seven for each type right so in our schema we have type query so inside here we've defined query and we say okay well for all the fields in this type 
we're going to define resolver functions, right? And later we'll see you don't actually need to define for every field, and you'll see why. But in this case, we do. We need to tell GraphQL how to actually get, or Apollo Server, how to actually, you know, return a 6. So this is a very simple function. All it's doing is returning a 6. And so Apollo Server will say, okay, this 6 is going to be basically be the return type for this. And it, it basically maps the 6 and returns a 6 back, right, if this is called. Same thing with here. It returns a 7, and then we're good, right? We've defined the resolver for how to actually execute and get back 7 or 6. So like I said, resolver map basically has top-level fields that correspond to your schema's types. So basically, your schema, right, has types, type query, and then it has fields. So in your, in your resolver map, you would define the type, and then you would define the fields resolver function for the fields and how to actually get the data and populate those fields okay so moving on let's look through a more realistic example so in this case we see some stuff like an object type right remember in the last video we talked about an object type which is basically a type that you define and it has fields either scalar or object or also object types in this case they're only scalars just for simplicity and then we also have type query and then we have a field or a query called user and basically it's returning a user with a specified ID right and here we have a data source so again just for simplicity's sake we're using a hard-coded array or list of data a list of users instead of actually you know making a connection and making a database and actually you know getting the users back from there which is more realistic but for this example we have a list of user objects okay so what does a resolver for this function actually look like so let's say, you know, a client actually calls us, right? He says, okay, I actually want the user with this ID. And then how does Apollo server, and also they specify that they only want the name. They want the name back. How does GraphQL server say, okay, um, how do I actually get the name back? What, how do I get the user back and then get the name back? How do I actually do that? Well, that's where we define a resolver. So in your resolver map, you define first the type. So it's a query, right? And then we're defining the field. So this field has to be the same name. And we say, okay, well, if you want to get the user back, right? If somebody calls this and you want to get the user back, here's what you should do, right? You should go into this resolver function and execute it. All this is doing, right? It's going to loop through this list, right? And then it's going to find the user object with the same user ID as this ID, right? So again, if it was a more realistic example, like a database, you wouldn't actually loop through a list. You would just write a query to find the user ID with that ID, right? So you might ask, what is args? What exactly does args mean? As you can see here, it's actually a parameter. Well, args really is just a JavaScript object that represents, has, has properties that are the parameters of this function. So let's say you had, you have a parameter here called ID, right? So then args in this case would be a JavaScript object with a property called ID. And the, the value of that would be whatever, whatever this value is, whatever you actually put as a parameter value. So you can easily access the parameters by accessing args and, and specifying what property name you want to access. So args.id is really just whatever input is inputted as a parameter value. Right? So then we're able to say, let's say, for instance, somebody says, I want the user with ID 1. Then, when you go here, it's going to loop through the, the list of users and say, okay, is this ID 1? Well, oh wait, yeah, it is. Okay, so then I'm going to actually say, I'm going to look through the users, and I'm going to find the user ID, right, user ID, which matches 1. And in this case, it does. So this is the user that you're returning. And that's what the return value is here, this object. Okay? Well, some of you guys might say, well, didn't you say that you actually have to define, you know, for each type, let's say query, I defined uh, I, I defined it here and I defined the resolver function for its fields. And then for, for user type, that's also a type. Why aren't you defining user here and defining how to actually get the fields for user? Why aren't you doing that? Well, here's the beauty of Apollo server. It does that for you if the names match. So what does that mean? Well, okay, like I said here, the return type is actually a user object, which is this user object, if, for instance, the example was that the ID was 1, right? So once it gets this object, it has to actually see what, what the client requested for. So let's say the client requested for a name, 
So it says, okay, I know that I want the name actually. So I have a user object here. Sorry, I have a user object, right? I have a user object here. The return value is a user object. And I know that it has properties ID and name. And I also know that the client requested for the field name of user. So since these are the same, I'm going to automatically map it there and return that. So you don't actually have to define that here. You don't actually have to say user and define how to actually get the name and the ID. It will map it for you as long as the property here is the same name as the field name. Okay. So what is this called? These are called default resolvers. So if you don't define a resolver for a particular schema field, like I said, we didn't define a resolver for ID or name. Apollo Server defines the default resolver for it. And the logic it goes through is, like I said, if these are the same, if the property name is the same, if the return type, if the return type has this has a property name, so this is the return type, right? It's a user object, has a property name the same as the field name that you're looking for, it will just map it automatically. Okay? So let's look through an example. First of all, let's talk about the arguments. A lot of you guys might say, okay, I kind of got confused. What are these What are these four different arguments that we're looking at here? Well, I've already explained args, right? It's just, you know, a JavaScript object with the property as whatever parameter you define for your query, and then the values are just the, you know, you can easily access the property and get the value back, right? Well, what is parent? Well, parent is actually the return value of the previous resolver. So basically, if you have to go through multiple resolvers to basically resolve all the and populate all the fields and populate them with data that the clients asked for, then you might have to go through multiple resolvers. And this might not sound totally clear right now, but don't worry, we're going to go through an example depicting this exact situation. Just think of it as the return value of the previous resolver, so the parent resolver basically. And context is basically an object that is shared across all resolvers and it's basically used for executing a particular operation. So what does that mean? Why are we actually having an object that is shared across all resolvers? Can you think of a use case when we would want to have very convenient access to an object? Well, in a more realistic example, you would have a database. And so you want to have, in the context, you want to actually have the database connection or the database instance and or you can also have an ORM, which is basically like SQLize or Mongoose, so you can easily have access to the data source. Right? In this case, right, we just hard coding users. But in that case, if you have a database, you would want to have, let's say, a database access. You can you can easily access and make queries or or operations. And so that would be common through all your resolvers. So info is something that's more it's less important right now. We're not really going to talk about it much just because it's not that important in these cases. We might we might discuss them later in future videos. But basically, it's just information about the operation's current execution state. For instance, the path to the current resolver or the resolver's name. And there's a lot of different fields, and we can discuss this later. So, resolver chains. What are those? Well, in this example, we talked about a pretty simple example, right? Why is that? Well, you see the fields here actually are scalar types. Let's say that this we had another field called, I don't know, friend. And it wasn't actually a scalar type. It was an object type called friend and so that friend object type has itself it has fields so then we actually have to resolve how to get those fields when the client asks for specific fields so then it gets more complicated because we actually have to go through multiple resolvers to get the data that the client requested for right and that's what we're going to discuss here let's look through this example we have a more well-defined schema and it's more realistic you have a library, you have type library, and you have type book, type author, type query. So the basic idea is here, a library has a branch and a bunch of books. And then each book has a title and an author. Each, each author has a name. Okay, so, and then there's a query, and the field is libraries, right? So somebody can easily request, I want to get all the libraries, it's going to return a list of libraries, right? So let's look through an example, but first let's define the data source. So again, for simplicity's sake, we're going to hard code the data source. It's going to be a list of libraries and a list of books, right? So, so let's say the client actually executes this query. They say, I want to get the libraries, all the libraries, right? That's a query that we defined. And I want to get 
the books, all the books, right, that are in this library. And for every book, I actually want to get, not the title, actually, I only want the name of the author. That's all I want. So how does Apollo server know to, how to get this data on the fly? How does it know uh, uh, you, how does it know that it can only and should only get the data that you requested for and where, how and where should it get the data? So again, that's where resolver co resolvers come in. So this is a resolver map that we defined for this specific use case. So you have a type query, right? You have a resolver function for the type query and remember, we have in our type query we have one field called libraries so we're defining a resolver function for this field and so this is pretty simple we're just returning the hard-coded array of libraries that we've defined here right but are we done though no because I actually want the list of books that correspond to this library and not only that I actually want the name of the author of each book so then the work's not done so Apollo GraphQL server says okay well where do I go from here I know that I have a list of libraries, but you actually ask for each library, you actually ask for books. So then what you do is you order the type library and you say, okay, that's great. Now I actually have type library and actually, I'm actually looking for books. Well, you might say, why am I not actually defining branch? Why am I not defining branch in here? Well, again, default resolvers. If the name matches, so as you can see here, the property name branch matches the field name branch. So it automatically maps this to that, right? When you get that return type from here, it automatically matches, matches and maps the branch property to the field name branch, right? So what I actually need to define is the list of books and how to get that. So how I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to access the parent, which is again, the previous resolver, the return value of the previous resolver, that's what the parent is. The parent is the previous value of the of the return of the previous resolver. Okay? So what that means is the first resolver returns this, right? That's good. But I actually want the the books that correspond to each object, right? So let's say I start with this parent being the first library object right so then I say okay I already mapped the title the branch name automatically because it's the same name but I actually want the list of books so once it goes to the resolver function books the parent is actually the value from the previous resolver which in this case is this object right and then we're gonna do books.filter and then for each book if the branch if the branch is the same as the parent branch then basically return that book so in this case, for this example, I'm going to loop through or filter through all of these books. And I'm going to look through and make sure the branch is the same as this branch. If it is the same, then this book belongs to this library. So for this first object, they're not the same. So we're going to ignore that. Then we're going to go to the next book. And so we see that the branch is actually the same. So we're going to actually map this to this and we're good to go. So now I actually have returned the list of books that correspond to this library. So that's great. But are we done? No, because I actually want the name of the author. So how do I get that? Well, that's what Apollo server is going to do. It's going to look for the type book, and it's going to look through the resolver functions here. And it's going to say, OK, well, I actually need the author. That's what I need. That's what you requested. I need the author. How do I get that? Well, so. It's going to access the parent, which again is this object, right? In this case, we only have one book, but in a list of books, basically, it would have a list of books, and then for each book, you would resolve the fields for each book. So we have this passed in as the parent, right? And then I'm going to access parent.author. So I'm going to access this property here, Michael Crichton, Crichton, and I'm going to set name to be that value. And remember, name is the field of author right so that is also why that we don't need to actually define type author and define how to get the name why is that well because the author resolver function is returning an author object right and this author object has a property name which corresponds to the field name here so it will be automatically mapped so you don't actually have to define a type author and, and 
manually map it. It does it for you. Okay, so that's great. We're done. So again, this is kind of what we talked about. This is kind of the the flow that Apollo Server goes through. First, it gets the li it checks the library's resolver function, then it goes to books, and then it, for each book, it gets the author, and then for each author, it gets the name. Right? Let's say we take this a step further, and the client this time they're picky. They're saying, you know what? I actually want everything. I don't want just the author's name. I actually want to get the title of the book. Well, how do you handle this? Well, it's pretty simple actually. We don't actually need to change anything. Why is that? Well, because like I said earlier, you don't actually need to define a type. You don't actually need to define a resolver function for title. You don't actually need to do that because it does that for right? So it's going to do that for you automatically. It's going to map the title. Automatically, it's going to map the title, right? So like when you get the list of books, you don't actually need to define title here because it knows that the property in this return value, which would be this title, is actually the exact same as this title field name. So it's going to map it automatically and then we're good. So the flow would be slightly different only in that it would actually first go to libraries, get the list of libraries, then for each library it would get the list of books, then for each book it would get the title and then the author and then for each author we get the name, right? And so this and this are default resolvers, you don't need to define them. Only these would have to be defined, right? So hopefully you guys have a pretty good understanding of how resolvers work, specifically in Apollo and GraphQL. And if you guys still have any issues in understanding, make sure to comment down below and uh, hopefully I can help you understand better. And also it's important to actually just fully understand from step one. So we introduce this very easy proof of concept. Make sure you fully understand that before going to the next example and then finally this example. Because if you, f you don't understand the first two examples, then this is going to seem very complicated. But if you f understand the first two, then this is pretty simple to understand. So thanks for watching guys and make sure to like and subscribe and look out for the next few videos.